Ken Davis, chief instructor for Holland and Holland at their shooting school, has designed an interesting layout on which to demonstrate his classic method of breaking clays. All the targets are of the traditional sporting type that closely resemble quarry species and they form a representative selection of birds to be found at most competitions. The tremendous variety that forms the appeal of the English sporting discipline gives the field shot a perfect preparation for game shooting and the clay shooter an endlessly absorbing and demanding sport. Here at the Holland and Holland Shooting School, the method of teaching our advocate is one of starting behind the target and following through. And although there are a number of accepted approaches, this is the one which most people seem best able to adopt for both their game shooting and shooting sporting clays. In shooting, as in many sports, good footwork, good body swing is important. And it all comes from taking up the right sort of stance to begin with. In game shooting, we go for an all-round stance. It's a fairly square, narrow stance with the feet roughly in the two o'clock position. And it's a stance which allows us to switch the body weight very quickly from one foot to the other and turn whichever way we want to, depending on where the shot's taken. For instance, with a shot at something low out in front, a low oncoming shot or a low going away target, as the gun's brought up, the weight comes right forward over the front foot, right over the top of the gun. With the same stance for something coming in high overhead, the weight can come right the way back from the waist, right up here onto the back foot if we need to, and of course we've got all the variations in between. For passing shots, a shot going from right to left, the weight can come over the left foot, the right toes push around, so as the shot's made, the whole body's turned to face the target quite squarely. And going the other way, the opposite can be done. The weight comes over the right foot, the left toes push around. But again, we're turning to face the target absolutely squarely and make this same good bed here for the stock to come to. Now, with sporting clays, we've got one big advantage in that we know roughly where the bird's coming from. We know its line, its height, its speed, and hopefully where we're going to kill it. We can still use this same stance, but now we can use it to our best advantage. And what we can do, particularly on the crossing shots, is set ourselves up knowing where we're going to kill the bird just by perhaps turning slightly to where we're going to take the shot, bringing the gun back to the trap, and then unwinding the body easily as the shot's made. The gun wants to be nicely balanced between both hands. The grip of the left hand is important, as this, of course, is the hand that guides the gun muzzles. With the side-by-side -side gun and the wedge forend, the thumb and fingers were down each side of the barrels, just at the end of the wood. With the over and under gun and the much bulkier forend, this, of course, is designed to be held. It's a similar sort of grip, thumb and fingers down each side of the gun this way. Um, a personal preference of mine is with this finger just coming down underneath on this. It's a much more comfy grip on this big forend and takes a lot of tension out of this arm. The four fingers around this big forend cause a lot of tension down through this arm as the shot's made. With the right hand, and here, two differences between many cyberside -side game guns and the over and under. One is obvious, the single trigger over the more usual double triggers, and that combined with the semi-pistol grip here. The trigger finger then, on the trigger guard, just in front of that trigger, and in a position where we can just get a nice, firm grip on that trigger, but not so far through that you're going to drag your second finger up behind the guard. In that position, after a few shots, that second finger is bruising on the guard all the while. The other thing, of course, that's important with the single trigger is that we get a good clean release between the two shots. It needs to be pulled, released cleanly, and then pulled again for the second. If we don't get that clean release, there's a good chance of losing the second shot. The thumb here, not left up on the safety catch, where it's behind the top lever, which on a lot of guns is quite sharp. And if the thumb's left there, it's not long before the gun comes back with the recoil of the shot and the top of the thumb is split open. So around the grip here with the thumb. So we now have good hand positions on the gun, with the gun well balanced between both hands. Now, no matter how well fitted or how suitable the gun might be, until it's mounted correctly, it's not going to point in the right direction. The easiest way to mount the gun well is to come into the same starting position each time. And the best starting position of all is one where the heel of the gun stock is just tucked up under the arm there. Now, why does this help so much? Well, you know, if you shoot off the right shoulder, it normally means you're right-handed, and this is the strong hand. It's the hand most people tend to want to use to begin with. 
and lifts up with this hand, and all that happens is that the gun either catches as it comes up, or it comes up too high on your shoulder, and all these movements are seesawed at the other end. With the gun under the arm, you can no longer lift with this hand. The left hand now has to be used to push out in the direction of the target, sufficiently for the stock to clear the armpit. The whole action, then, of mounting the gun is really just one of extending this arm. In this position now, ready to use the left hand, keep your head up naturally. Don't try and move it down to meet the gun stock. If the head goes down to meet the stock, again, it simply stops the gun from coming up into the right position. So the head up naturally, the left hand pushing out in the direction of the target, and the stock sliding right the way up into your cheek and your shoulder coming in firmly behind it to lock it into position. A good gun mounting technique is the basis of all good shotgun work. We're just going to look at a medium oncoming shot. It's not a shot you'll often find in competition, but it's one which will give us time to illustrate the pickup of the line of the target and the gun mounting. And while we're watching on, I'm just going to put in my earplugs. Whoa! All right. Nice, straight over the top, and plenty of time to pick up the line. Now, before we load the gun for the first time, a quick look through to make sure everything is clear and safe to load. And the gun closed safely at the ground, so if it does go off accidentally, nobody's hurt. There's the stance, the starting position, safety catch. Now, the muzzle at roughly the height the bird's going to appear from, so we can get onto the line and judge the speed right from the beginning. Whoa! Just take another one. 